I'm going to uh, do one last video on lightning. So I'll talk about the science of lightning and I'll talk about some of the interesting phenomena uh, such as uh, superbolts, which are, uh, you know, incredibly powerful uh, lightning bolts that are much, much higher than the norm. So where they occur and, and uh, a little bit about how they form. So basically you know this is uh so this is an article nature's light show the science of lightning you know the electrical energy so you get a you get a charge separation in the clouds and that sets up a voltage difference when that voltage difference exceeds the the uh, breakdown um, threshold um, which depends on the distance between the charges that are separated and the conductivity of the pathway in between um, things like that then you get the discharge and it's much more common um, within a cloud or from one cloud to another cloud than it is from the cloud to the ground but what really affects us most of course is the cloud to ground strike so um, the basic theory is that you get an electric circuit developing between the thunderstorm and the ground as well as within the cloud itself so strong updrafts, convective updrafts, they heave water droplets high into the air where they freeze into ice pellets. Downdrafts then hurl these ice pellets back down toward the surface. And if they, uh, on the way, they run into other water droplets that then freeze on contact as well as other ice pellets that freeze together. And of course, you know, continuous cycle, you get these layers of, of ice forming and this is how hail forms. But these collisions, they cause electrons, which of course neg are negatively charged, to break off of drops going up in the updraft and collect on the ones coming down in the downdraft. Okay, so the, the, the friction um, of the collisions strips electrons. The electrons tend to go to the heavier ice particles, which collect at the bottom of the cloud because they're heavier, gravity pulls them down. And the updraft, uh, of the ice with the electron stripped off goes to the top of the cloud so you get a positive charge concentration at the top of the cloud and a negative one at the bottom. Now the positive at the top of one cloud can create a um, you get a voltage difference to, from the top of one cloud to the bottom of an adjacent cloud and if, if that voltage difference is large enough to exceed the breakdown threshold, um, then you can get a uh, circuit forming basically and conduction of electricity and, uh, and electrons going from one to the other and you get a lightning burst. So this is cloud to cloud lightning burst. Um, you can also get a discharge within a cloud, the positive to the negative, the voltage uh, threshold, the voltage difference can exceed the threshold. You get a lightning burst here, intercloud lightning. And of course, the bottom of the cloud negatively charged, um, that repels electrons on, uh, away from the surface, so they go elsewhere. So we have the positive and the negative here. And again, you can get a, so this is a cloud to ground uh, discharge. This is called a CG, cloud to ground negative discharge. You know, the bottom of the cloud being negative. You can also, what's not shown in this diagram is you can get the, if this thing tilts over, because of uh, shear winds, then the positives can push, a, can attract electrons in the ground, and then you can get a just a, a a lightning bolt from the top of the cloud to the to the ground. Is so that's a, a CG positive uh, discharge. Okay, so um, the atmosphere is a pretty good insulator, so you need to build up high voltages to get the lightning bursts. Um, you know, because it's a good insulator, we don't get lightning uh, every shower. Although during the Carboniferous period, 300 million years ago, there was a lot more oxygen in the atmosphere, up to 30% oxygen content instead of today's 20%. So the atmosphere was much more sensitive to electric charges and you could get spectacular thunderstorms unlike any that we see today. Okay, but you, so, so you need a certain strength of updraft to get that charge separation. As the updraft strengthens, the charge separation increases. 
Eventually it builds up enough to overcome the insulate, insulation properties of the atmosphere and you get the lightning. This is the intracloud variety where lightning occurs within the cloud itself. And lightning can also run between two different thunderstorm clouds, right? The top of one to the bottom of the other. Um, also from the bottom of the cloud to the ground or the top of the cloud to the ground if the cloud is tilted over, okay? How does lightning get to the ground? So what you see here is the negative charges start moving down. They reach the bottom, the ground, and you get a discharge equalizing the charges in both the cloud and the bottom. So you can see equal equalization here. You can see the charge separation occurring in the cloud, the electrons moving down. Okay, um, so the most common form of the cloud to ground is called neg the CG negative lighting, lightning. Positive lightning, lightning is when the uh, cloud becomes tilted and the, the lightning strike is from the top of the cloud to the ground. So this is, this is rare. It only happens in about 5% of the, of the strikes and uh, it tends to be stronger as well because the voltage difference has to be larger to over because you're, we're going from the top of the cloud to the ground instead of the bottom of the cloud to the ground. So you need a higher voltage. So those are more powerful strikes. And you get these super bolts, which are 10 times more powerful than average lightning producing a billion volts. So, so we'll talk about how that forms. Here's an example of the CG plus, the top of the cloud to the ground, creating the circuit and the, the lightning bolt. Okay, and when there's uh, this huge discharge of energy, there's very low frequency waves, there's extremely low frequency waves that are put out, and these can be detected um, by detectors, and the travel time to the detectors varies, um, and that allows us to triangulate and find out exactly where on the Earth the um, lightning strike occurred. Um, some of these super bolts, they can, um, for example, uh, you know, a church in England was hit by a bolt so powerful that a stone weighing 350 pounds was thrown 60 yards over the roof, and another stone of unknown size was tossed a quarter of a mile. Um, you know, uh, a, a bolt struck a cornfield. Um, left a crater 10 feet wide and a foot deep and broke windows and shook houses. Uh, you know, you can have incredibly uh, powerful bolts. The temperature of the lightning is hot. So 54,000 degrees Fahrenheit or 30,000 degrees Celsius, which is five times as hot as the surface of the sun, which is about 6,000 uh, degrees Celsius. Okay, of course, you know, when you get the shock lightning produced, it heats the air instantly causing the air to explosively expand beyond the speed of sound and creates a sonic boom, of course. Now, because light travels way faster than sound, you see the lightning long before you hear it, okay? And, uh, you know, when the lightning strike is close by, it's like a loud boom or a crack um, is the sound, but when it's further away, the sound waves blend together and you get a more of a prolonged rumble, okay? Um, so, so those are the key factors. So let's have a look at, if you Google YouTube lightning high-speed camera, you get all of these video clips showing lightning in action. And it's well worth watching some of these. So here is a lightning strike with a high-speed camera. Okay, so you can see the electron is moving down, creating a path. Now one of these will win. The one that wins gets, gets everything. Okay, so this one here, keep your eye on this one here. It hits the ground first and creates a circuit and then all of the energy is discharged through the bolt there. Okay, so we'll watch, we'll watch again here. Okay, so you get these leaders coming down. One of them hits first, boom, and the lightning bolt, the main bolt occurs here. These other ones hit slightly after and also created their their own uh, bolt. So it's fascinating images from high school photography. Lightning strikes from storm clouds down to the ground. It also strikes up into storms and also out into thin air. 
Sometimes isolated sparks shoot up out of the ground. Lightning channels sometimes sail in strong wind. I want to stop and that. Take or unlikely paths. Okay, just uh, another video, 103,000 frames per second. So you can see the leaders coming down, one of them winning, and then the main bulk discharge coming up. So it's pretty, it's pretty fascinating uh, stuff. Um, science of keeping safe indoors and outdoors. Okay, um, people don't have enough respect for lightning even now. So. You know, this video, for example, of lightning hitting a tree at the Women's U.S. Open Golf Tournament. The amazing thing about the video, beyond the lightning itself, was the number of people still milling around outside. You know, many people are outside with golf, boating, other outdoor activities, but, you know, thunderstorms can catch them there, and the danger is, is there, and people need to really respect it. So a motorcycle rider was hit by lightning and killed, um, okay, so this is a fairly recent, um, this is, uh, well, this is from a year ago. This is Marshall Shepard on his blog writing about uh, some of the lightning storms. Uh, the vast majority of lightning flashes, about 80% or so, are intra-cloud, cloud to air, or cloud to cloud. It's the cloud to ground flashes that pose a risk to a person standing on a golf course, playing baseball, etc., etc., Okay, so the cloud to ground are only 20% of the lightning bursts, and of all of those bursts, about only about 5% about are the more powerful kind. They're the cloud to ground positive bursts. The most common ones are the cloud to ground negative bursts. Um, okay, uh, you know, and this is, describes basically the procedure. You have these negatively charged ions surging towards the ground in distinct steps. It's called a step leader. You can you see that in the videos. Um, as it moves down, it can attract uh, streamers of positive charge going up to meet it. When they connect, then uh, you get the return stroke, explodes up the channel or pathway. And that's, uh, you know, the, the main lightning stroke. It happens so fast that you can't really see the direction of propagation, but it's moving from the ground upward. If there's enough charge left in the cloud, you can get dart leaders using the same pathway, and then you can get multiple strokes, and that's why the lightning seems to, to flicker. So you can see the leaders coming down, making contact with the tree, and then the main discharge occurring and uh, you know the uh, circuit being completed and possibly pulsing okay so a um, couple an, an interesting thing you can use a laser powerful laser to make a plasma and uh, so if, the, if you have a, a cloud uh, with the charge separation shining a laser up you can, can you can you can create a plasma pathway and the lightning can follow the path that the laser pulse was on. Okay, so that's just an interesting thing. Um, the most powerful lightning strikes are these super bolts. And um, I'll just show you the images here. Um, actually, they're in this paper. Um, well, actually, um, I'll just, there, 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 there's these super bolts that occur. They're typically over the North Atlantic, Eastern North Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, also over the um, Andes. Okay, um, and uh, you know, these, these super bolts are very, very rare and unusual. Um, they're, they, they're, they have different properties from typical lightning. Um, and uh, yeah, they're generally in winter rather than in summer, and they're still being studied. Uh, you know, we don't know a lot about them. I do want to mention there's a worldwide lightning location network. Um, you could just Google it, and you can see images of, you know, real-time 
lightning flashes. The blue dots and the stations that are monitoring it are the red stars. Okay, thanks a lot for listening.